sometimes use these memory aids because uh, we've been sort of sleeping less. With <laughs> some last night. One second. Thank you. So the nurse is forgetful. Um, so my name is Heyman Bowen. I'm a uh, resident physician who just completed a residency and a clinical fellow in geriatric rehab. Background is physical medicine and rehab, focusing on geriatric rehab. Um, we have Steve, who's actually has an extensive background in IT. Um, and then we have uh, Nishant, who actually has bioinformatics. Uh, we have Ravi, who actually was an aeronautical engineer, then became a biomedical engineer, and also is developing. And then we have Tammy, who is our designer in chief. <laughs> um, so what we are going to show you is basically a very simple system, but a very powerful web portal that we want to build. It's basically to help uh, patients with uh, all ranges of dementia. But in this case, we're going to show you mild cases of dementia, um, where we will allow patients to live with dementia to maintain their independence and engage uh, with their environments. And how will we do that? We're basically using a powerful web portal along with um, NFC tags. So people have heard about it and it's coming more and more prevalent. And what we're doing is basically using these as memory triggers for any uh, activity or an, uh, environmental cues that these patients need to uh, maintain their independence and carry on with their life. And what we're going to show you is our few examples first before we start off. So for instance, we'll quickly start off and show you a quick example. Do we have a uh, camera on that phone? For instance, we're, we're going to have Mary. Yeah. For, for example, Mary is a patient with dementia. She forgets how to operate a microwave. So all she has to do is take her smartphone and tap it onto the NFC tag affixed on the microwave and of quickly a video pops up which shows stepwise instructions uploaded by her husband in his own voice using our content management platform. So what we did was basically we, take, we took an NFC tags which are pretty much going to be prevalent soon. We uh, labeled it so that people can identify this quite easily and then connected it to a portal where patients or their caregivers can easily program this. Now you're wondering, is there a lot of programming involved in this? No, there isn't. Our portal actually simplifies that task for you. So a patient would get a, uh, let's say it purchased a stamp of 20 NFCs. They're already pre-coded. And now Steve will show you how easy it is to code these NFC tags and stick it to any one of these devices and provide a instruction, a memory cue, or uh, some, even their own voice to explain what that item does. Okay, so, uh, okay. so here's the website. Uh, we're logging in as a, uh, say a pharmacist, and we sign in, and then we see a list of NFC tags uh, for a particular user. So say there is the, uh, this particular medication uh, that we want to uh, set up. Um, it could be, it's, you actually have generic things. This is something that's already set up. We're just showing you uh, the process of doing it. So there's the description of uh, what this tag is for. You can add text instructions that would show up on the, the smartphone or whatever device, uh, like an, an iPad or something like that, to uh, give instructions at that point when it's activated with the NFC tag. Uh, you can enter a video, uh, which can be existing, or you can record it, as well as an audio recording. And we've heard that uh, uh, creating instructions for people with dementia is a difficult process. Not all caregivers are experienced in this, so uh, this is we we want to design this so that it it helps people go through that process and creating uh, a task-oriented thing as well as because this is a platform where many people are creating this type of content, it could become a discovery service as well. Uh, I mean, there is uh, the option of having it on uh, YouTube uh, and then having a community around it. So uh, we hit done. Uh, we can make changes here, hit done. And then uh, once, uh, immediately that change will be available on the smartphone. Um, now that, uh, so for instance, let's say st uh, Steve was the pharmacist who did that. So the patient, uh, they would actually stick a tag and then program that tag to that prescription bottle. So currently, as you know, by the way, 
If, just to clarify, near field communication, NFC, I realize there's another group coming up with NFC and we'd hoped that they would come first so they could explain it to you, so we'd have saved our two minutes. But let me explain this to you. So basically, it's basically a passive metal device in here that has a coating. And I could let uh, the, the, the enthusiast on NFC explain to you a little bit more on that. But basically, it could store a 40 kilobyte of information, I believe. Right, and so a URL code, right? So simple code. And when a, any device, for instance, a watch, a smartphone, so a watch can range from $50 to all the way up to the $1,000 iPhone that's coming up Friday, which will have NFC, by the way, the first time Apple's going to actually do that, while Android has had it for years. Um, so basically, now you're thinking about the, the already 500 million devices out there have NFC capability already. Now, iPhones, there will be 200 million expected to come into the field with NFC capability. So we have these passive devices which cost five to seven cents each. You could stick it on anything. And what we did was we branded these stickers so this will be easily recognizable to any dementia patient in the whole continuum. So anywhere they see it, they see a tag that says care umbrella. There must be something to it. So that's why, let's say you have a medical bottle or a medication bottle. Now the ph pharmacist has actually put the tag on. Now the patient is unsure whether they should be taking the furosemide when their legs are swollen and when they should be taking it. So, yeah. a video would pop up. Nope. Yeah, a video pops up which basically in which the pharmacist or the physician explains, you know, pharmacist or the physician explains about uh, the, the medication and how to use it. The, the whole purpose is, you know, to get it personalized. For example, if Mary Mary needs to operate a toaster, a microwave, so you know, we need to. Uh, her husband can personalize these tags for her. That's the whole purpose of this technology. And anyone can personalize this. Anyone can log in. A caregiver, the patient themselves, if they're capable, to send them a reminder. And for instance, we have these case bases where, let's say, there's a picture that they want to remember. They just take one of our tags, stick it on, enter the portal enter exactly what that is. They could actually enter the voice, as Steve mentioned, they could actually record their own video, upload it, they could write a text, or record their own voice, or their, maybe a loved one's voice, explaining what this picture's all about. So when they go around, they could actually touch it with their cheap wrist device that has an FC, or an expensive phone. We will let you do any device. And then you will get a feedback, either voice visual, auditory, or text. And that goes for a whole continuum. Now, just to wrap it up quickly, we have thought about a lot of things here. We've thought about everything from how we're going to actually monetize this, because we have to keep this going, right? Because we need to make sure that this product works for people down the road and continues to work and build. We also thought about community. So we can talk a little bit more about that. Like, it's a portal that we're building where community can share ideas about what's best for their, uh, their loved ones. And they could share templates about what should I give in terms of scripts when I tag it? What should I tell them about how, how I should do something? Or are there videos I could share with someone else? Like, this video worked for my loved one. Maybe you could try it. So basically, they could share videos. So we're going to create that community as well. And also, we're creating, uh, right now, Ruby showing an app, which basically is a conduit to the web portal. So they could actually do everything. Thank you. <laughs> do everything on the device or on the web portal. So it's, we're trying to be as device agnostic as possible, make it accessible everywhere, use it whether it's a, a very cheap device or an expensive device, and make it uh, prevalent for the whole d d dementia community. And hopefully, chronic disease communities too down the road. So if you think about it, it's a portal, it's a reminder, it's a cue, it's everything that we're talking about for our patients. And also, we're, I've also thought about, in terms of um, NFC codes in the home, uh, to help you monitor patients and data analytics. We've thought about all of that. We could answer all that in the question period. Right? Thank you. Um, just a comment. I, I actually think it's a really good use case of NFC, so congratulations on that. I, I like, particularly on the pill, uh, prescription kind of um, summary of how you're supposed to take the meds. I wonder a little bit about the toaster examples and things like that. If a, if a patient can't remember how to use a toaster, are they going to remember to put their phone up against an NFC tag that's on the toaster and things like that? No, good question, because I think the, 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 from a patient standpoint, what they want to be is as independent as possible. 
right? You don't want to create that negativity. You don't want to say that you can't do it, right? So we know from teaching patients and how they learn, often it's, if they see someone doing it, they do it better, right? They can sometimes copy what they're, they can mimic what they're doing. Uh, a toast, making a toast is not dangerous, right? England, they may make tea and toasts. Here, they make the same thing over here. So it's a simple thing. You, if you could show a video, let's say a patient goes towards a toaster, swipes the, the NFC. Now, I understand about you thinking, oh, wait a second, will the patient recognize to do this task? Now, there's a continuum. Mild dementia, a patient may realize that they have a device. They have to just look towards the label that they're their care, their care portal, they realize that this might give them some more information. So that's why we're branding it. Because we don't want NFC of different labels all around. We want dementia patients to be using the same consistent NFC labels. Now we're not making profit on this, we just want consistency because we don't want patients to have different labels getting confused. So we just want everyone to think, oh, when they see this label, there's more to it. So they would swipe it with either a watch that would provide uh, an auditory uh, feedback or maybe a smartphone that'll give them visual feedback. So they'll tell them, turn on the toaster, put a slice. Okay, on. we're way over time. What's the umbrella mean? Why is it umbrella and not like a daisy? A daisy will let water through it. <laughs> no, I think the whole point is it's a care umbrella, right? So you're protecting the patient uh, in good times and bad. We'll always be there for you. And we're, it's, it's also the cloud sort of mentality. Um, so it's like we're, it, it's, um, yeah, it's basically protecting. Uh, one thing I just wanted to add, as we're talking about uh, possibly interacting with your environment with NFC, uh, as it appears with de uh, dementia use cases, if somebody is doing something very repeatedly, like they see a certain stick or a symbol for NFC, such, such as an umbrella, they can touch that and then that gives them more information. So it's sort of a gateway of more information. So they develop that muscle uh, motor, or motor memory learning, uh, which is a portal for uh, assisted instruction. So that could be a, a good uh, user affordance.